Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Well, we're entering the third week of Advent and this week we're going to be moving on to another aspect of um, what Christ brings to our lives through Christmas. Now, the first week we lit a candle, uh, the hope candle. How Christ brings us hope is just, there's so many prophetic utterances in the scriptures that talk about hope. Last week we emphasized peace, that Jesus Christ was the Prince of Peace, and he uh, has brought peace into the world through his incarnation. Today we're going to be focusing in on the joy, the joy of our salvation. Over the next six days, we're going to be talking about how Christ Jesus, given to be our Savior and Redeemer, brings us exceedingly great joy. And for this week, I'd like to light the candle for joy. So this morning, we start by looking at a wonderful Old Testament prophecy concerning the coming of the Messiah. In Isaiah chapter 35, a great prophetic word concerning the coming Savior was spoken. In verse 1 and 2 of that chapter, it was written, The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like a crocus. It will burst into bloom. It will greatly re rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Further to this, several verses down from that in verses 4 and 5, the prophet claims that when the Savior comes, verse 5 says, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf unstopped. Then will the lay, lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Hundreds of years after this prophetic word was given by Isaiah, the prophecy came to pass. The people of Israel were living in oppression under the tyranny of the Roman Empire. The people were looking for a savior who would rescue them from their physical distress. God saw the people and he understood that it wasn't just the slavery of the Romans that they had to be concerned about. There was a more pressing concern. The true slavery that the people were under was not physical, but was spiritual. The people were under slavery to sin. Their hearts were dry and parched and separated from God by their rebellion. The people needed the waters of life to soften and to bring life and fertility to the weary land of their hearts. The Lord fulfilled his promise to the people. They needed a Savior not to save them from the Romans, but to save them from their sins. The day came when Mary was approached by an angel and advised that she would become the mother of the promised Messiah. Further this, to this it is written in Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 that the Lord himself appeared to Mary's betrothed husband Joseph and said unto him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to embrace Mary as your wife, for the one conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Afterwards, when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem in Judea, the time came for Jesus to be born. Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 11 records what happened nearby after the birth of Christ. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord 
shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. After that wonderful first Christmas day, we see that Jesus grew through boyhood into manhood. And when he became a man, he started his ministry. He healed the deaf, the lame, and the blind as a sign that he would be the one who would heal the spiritual brokenness of the people that needed spiritual healing and restoration to their blinded eyes. The people who experienced the Lord bringing healing were overjoyed with the coming of the Lord, and they were filled with great joy. Indeed, the Lord came to bring spiritually refreshing water to those who are dry and dead in their spirits. In John 4, we read of the story of Jesus as he enters Samaria and goes to Jacob's well. He speaks to a Samaritan woman that was seated or that who came to draw water from the well. And as he was asking her for a drink, she was talking to him and saying that she couldn't believe that he as a Jew was asking her, a Samaritan, for a drink. And Jesus said, if you knew who was talking to you, you would ask him for living water. And if you drink of this living water, you'll never be thirsty again. It's written in John 4, everyone who drinks this water, referring to the water in Jacob's well, will be thirsty again, said Jesus. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You see, after Jesus was sacrificed for our sins, he rose from the dead, triumphing over death in the grave. And prior to the Lord ascending into heaven, he appeared to his disciples and prepared them for his departure by commissioning them. And this is what he said in John chapter 20, verse 22, 21 and 22. He said, Again Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so also I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. You see, after Jesus ascended into heaven, he left his disciples with more than just the testimony of his death and resurrection. Jesus breathed onto them and they received the Holy Spirit. God deposited his living, living water within the disciples that day. They blossomed and they spiritually came to life that day as the Spirit of God was living in them and made his home within them. Their sins were atoned for by Jesus and they were spiritually healed and their blinded spiritual eyes were opened to see the truth. The Holy Spirit that day became a, became a deposit in them guaranteeing the eternal life that was gifted to them by the Lord. Jesus had risen from the dead and they were filled with an overflowing of the joy of their salvation. This was in fulfillment of that ancient prophecy in Isaiah chapter 35. Jesus is still doing the same thing today, giving the same spiritual awakening, that same spiritual healing, that same spiritual drink to all who are thirsty. The indwelling Holy Spirit a spring of living water welling up to eternal life. May God bless you this day as we start our Advent week focusing in on joy. This is Food for Thought.